Did you know that there exists a feature-rich free software package that allows you to perform face detection, motion detection, recordings, email notifications, and more? This software allows you to use webcams, USB, and IP cameras, and many more all in one place. Here are four reasons you might want to use it. Peace of mind for when you are traveling and are staying at a hotel or Airbnb. Set up your laptop with face detection and email notifications and get an email with a picture of anyone that enters the room. Security system for your home. Set up multiple IP and webcams around the house to have email notifications and recordings. This is also great for your room when you live with roommates that you can't trust or they have friends that you can't trust. At work. For when you have co-workers or even cleaning or security staff snooping around and stealing things at your desk. I kid you not when I say that security staff at a place I worked for stole electronic hardware from us. Lastly, there is software out there that can do similar things but they are cloud-based and oftentimes require you to pay monthly or annual fees and don't support many different cameras, makes and models as this one. Also, the free ones often don't have many usable features like face detection, which is important to have to reduce the number of false detections. Keep watching to find out what I use and how to easily set it up for yourself. As with all my videos, if you find it useful, please share, give a thumbs up, and subscribe to be notified of new videos. I definitely appreciate the support. For more details and info on this video, and for the links, please check out the description. All right, let's get started. The application is called iSpy, and it's the world's most popular free video surveillance software. And it doesn't have any ads. You can add as many cameras as your system can handle. You can set facial detection, motion detection, audio detection, recordings, and many more. It's highly configurable if you take the time to look through all the features and uh, that it has and learn how to use it. Plus, it supports many cameras, so you aren't stuck to just one brand. First step, you need to download the installer. Visit the site and download the version that applies to you. Only Windows 7 and up is supported with newer versions of the software. Older XP and Vista must use older versions of iSpy. Next, download the plugins you want. As you can see, there are several neat and useful plugins, license plate recognition, face recognition, text overlay and detection, barcode scanning, and some other third-party plugins that are not free. Today, we are only interested in the face recognition plugin, so download it too. Once the downloads finish, locate the install file for iSpy and execute it. Select the folder to install to. If it asks, choose not to launch the software after installation completes. If it launches, just close it. We have one more step before we launch. Next, locate the plugin file. It is a compressed zip file. Copy the face folder from the zip file over to the plugins folder of the iSpy software. I'm going to assume your laptop has a webcam on it, or at least your desktop has an external webcam hooked up and working already. Otherwise, you will need to hook one up and get it configured and working before continuing on. You are now ready to launch. Find the icon for iSpy and launch it. Next we will add the webcam and configure it. Click on add and select local camera. Notice here that you can add all sorts of camera types and even a floor plan. Select your webcam for the video device. Capture mode should be video. Select the highest resolution supported by your camera for video and snapshots. Click OK to save. I will edit my existing camera to show how to configure the settings. Give a name to your camera. Clicking on the three dot icon here brings up the window where the device is selected for this camera. You can set the maximum frame rate the camera will run at and a different value can be set for recordings. Setting too low will result in less smooth video. Setting too high can cause more CPU usage and storage usage. So experiment to find the right balance. Next to motion detection. Set the method to detect motion. Default works fine here. You can experiment to see what works best for you if you like. Set the min and max trigger range here. 
set the min value higher to prevent small amounts of motion from triggering a motion detection, and set the max value lower to prevent too much motion from triggering a motion detection. Set display style to show how the video is detecting motion. This will show you where the detection of motion is occurring. In the video screen, you can highlight the areas that you want to detect motion in. You can resize or drag the zone off screen to remove. Add multiple if you need. Set alerts next. You can set different types of alerts and corresponding actions here, but we will set it for face detection. Make sure both alerts enabled and messaging are checked. Select face for the mode. Select when motion detected so that face detection only runs when motion is detected. Click the three dot button to set up the face plugin. You can configure the minimum size the face needs to be in order for it to be considered for face detection. Depending on how far people will be away from your camera, you can increase or decrease the size. You don't want it to incorrectly detect something smaller as a valid face, so test out what works best for your setup. Click the other three dot button to configure the interval. You can set how long to wait after an alert before being able to trigger another alert. This will help prevent too many alerts if there are a lot of alerts triggering. Next, select action of send the email and set the when drop down to alert. You can set other ones, so explore to your heart's content. Click add and enter the email address to email the alert notification to. Make sure the include image checkbox is checked so that you get an attached image. Click OK to save. Set recordings next. You can configure to not record, record with motion detected, or on alert. Set the inactivity, min, and max record times. Set the quality of the video, high quality equals more hard disk space used. Set the compression profile to use. H.264 is the best. You can even set a different camera to trigger a recording. We won't set it in our example. If you have a pan tilt zoom camera, then you can also configure some features here. Lastly, for this camera configuration, you can configure for image captures by setting local saving enabled. This is different from the face detection image capture. These are separate image captures that can be triggered and stored locally for you to review. Set the trigger by selecting which when setting. You can configure the delay before the image capture is taken and quality of the image. You can also overlay any text in the image capture. Click finish to save this camera. Almost done. A few more settings to configure before you can use your face detection motion recording camera. So bear with me. Click Settings to enter the software settings. Set the playback mode. iSpy setting should be used if you have also set up and configured the VLC video player. Doing so will allow you to playback recordings and also have a bar at the bottom indicating where motion is detected. If you select default, it will use your default Windows player. Lastly, you need to configure the SMTP for being able to send emails. I'm going to use Gmail but you can use others. The use iSpy server setting is only if you have a subscription with iSpy. In that case, emails will go through their servers. Set your email address, username, and password. Then enter the server and port numbers. It's best to use port 587 and SSL for encryption. You don't want people to be able to sniff your account credentials if you're using public Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi that isn't your own. Next, click test to see if you get the email. Note that some internet connections have blocked certain ports or services for security purposes. In these cases, this may not work. An example is some work networks do not allow this through their firewalls. You can also use the messaging tab to configure the template for the email that is sent. Click OK to save and you're ready to test out your camera. That's it. You now have your very own personal security system. If you have more webcams or even IP cameras, you can add them too and they can all be configured to have face detection, motion detection, and much more. 
Note that your results will vary based on the resolution of your camera, the resolution supported, and the settings you set. When using a system with an SSD or a solid state drive, it is not ideal to keep this system on 24 7. The constant recording and deleting of old videos will reduce the life of the SSD. So, configure the storage to a regular hard disk drive is best. One thing I didn't go over is that you can set storage management for each camera. This prevents video storage from eating up all your hard disk space by capping the video set to a maximum size and or age. Do this in the camera settings under the storage tab. One last very important point is to check local laws on recording or surveillance of people. In most cases, it is illegal to do without informing people that they are being recorded, so you might need to have a sign up that lets others know that the area is under video surveillance and recording. So go find one online and print it out, and put it up the next time you, you want to use your security system. As I mentioned at the beginning, this could be great to use in the Airbnb, hotels, at home or work. Now, there are many more features of this software we haven't even touched on in this video, so go and try it out yourself. You won't regret it. It is free to use locally on your PC, and there are also paid options available so that you can use their service to have secured remote access capabilities. Hope you found this video useful. Enjoy trying this out, and as always, share, like, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already.